Here real quick with the uh, male reproductive system, talk mainly about the testes and the seminiferous tubules and the development of the spermatozoa on this first show. And then we'll look at the rest of the male uh, kind of accessory kind of reproductive glands on the next one here. So this is showing you the male reproductive system. You can see uh, this first show you we're talking mainly about the, the testes and what is going on there. But you can see there is a tube that goes up here uh, to the rest of the reproductive system. We're also going to look at the seminal vesicles, uh, the prostate gland, the bubble urethral glands, and then the erectile bodies of the penis in terms of the histology of this system. So, and this can show you some of the different parts that we've looked at the ureters, we've looked at the bladder, but again, seminal vesicles are on the backside of the bladder. Uh, prostate is right underneath that where you have the urethra passing through it that we talked about before, the bulbar urethra glands, and then again, the rest of the male reproductive system here. So to start with, let's take a look at the testes. The testes are, again, surrounded by some connective tissue similar to the ovaries, that tunica albigenia. Uh, they do have a thickening within that. Uh, really what we're looking at for the most part here is gonna be these seminiferous tubules, which are these coiled tubes that are responsible for making the sperm cells. Uh, all said and done, probably about 5,000 meters worth of tubules in there. Uh, outside of that, there is some, some connective tissue in between those and there's some interstitial cells, some cells in between each of the seminiferous tubules called interstitial cells or Leydig cells. So this shows you the, the testy right here. You can see lots of circular tubes even on the zoomed out image. As we go in on a little bit more, these are what we refer to as seminiferous tubules. Uh, what these are is if you look at kind of the outside of those tubules, those are the beginning or kind of sperm stem cells as they work their way down from that outside towards the lumen. They are in their different stages of differentiation, getting to those uh, primary sex cells, uh, that one end or uh, haploid sex cell. And you can see the, a little bit of those tails on that, but you can see, even see the shape of the nucleus change as we go in these a little bit further. You can see how the nucleus gets a little bit smaller and is going to get to more of that size that we see when we're getting to an actual spermatozoa. Uh, the spermatogonia are those round stem cells up near the surface, right by the basal lamina. Uh, those are going to be doing mitosis. We then get to these larger cells that are a little bit more towards the lumen. These are the primary spermatocytes. There is in secondary spermatocytes. Both of these are in different stages of mitosis. And then as we get to the lumen, you're going to have the spermatids, which are the one end or haploid ones here that just really need to finish their external development in order to be functioning spermatozoa. So you can kind of see this idea right here. You got the spermatogonium up here, the spermatozoa. You then have that kind of partway through meiosis one, and then those still circular cells that are on the outs on the inside of the lumen here are going to be the spermatids. As they get a little bit later on here, you can see their nucleus condenses down into the head of the sperm cell and that is going to be those late spermat spermatids that are going to become those spermatozoa during the process called spermiogenesis. Uh, what is a little bit different versus the female, uh, again, the male sex cell is pretty much genetic material strapped to a motor uh, with an engine. So if we kind of go up to these primary spermatocytes, if you remember with the female, one primary oocyte was giving us one functional sex cell, in terms of the male, one primary spermatocyte is going to give us four functional spermatozoa, which means uh, lot larger numbers of spermatozoa are going to be functional from these different stem cells. Uh, if you were to actually look at the numbers on it and a normally, normal ejaculation, uh, you're really looking at somewhere around the order of about 200 million spermatozoa in that. So you can see some of these right here. You can see that spermatogonium right here at the surface. These primary spermat spermatocytes that are working our way down. And then you can see the spermatids on the interior. Uh, we might try to actually go and see each of those ones there. In between each of these seminiferous tubules is something called interstitial cells of Leydig or Leydig cells. 
Uh, usually in a cluster here, these cells are responsible for responding to LH and generating testosterone. Uh, that testosterone helps in the sperm cell development as well as gives all those secondary sex characteristics that you would find in males. And you can see, and you can see the kind of the edges of these different uh, seminiferous tubules and you can see this group of cells in the center. Those are those Leydig cells. Uh, there is some tight junctions here that we really, because in reality, the immune system would find these to be somewhat foreign. So there is a kind of immune barrier between the testes and uh, the rest of the bloodstream a little bit here. So these Sertoli cells are the cells that are kind of making that barrier and allowing uh, nutrients and other things to pass through them. Uh, provide fluid, like it says there, to the lumen of the seminiferous tubules. They also help convert, uh, using testosterone, convert some hormones into stuff that is going to actually facilitate making the sperm cells. Uh, the other thing they'll see is if sperm production is getting too high, they can release inhibin, which can tone down that FSH release and release and actually tone down sperm cell production. And you can see these are usually down in the middle here a little bit, a little bit of a larger cell versus the spermatids that are a little bit more compact. Not the spermatids, excuse me, the primary spermatozoa. You can see the kind of the difference between those. And again, those are totally cells part way down in here. You can kind of see on this image right here. So how this is being regulated, it's really that uh, follicle stimulating hormone is going to act on the Sertoli cells to secrete this androgen binding protein and the LH acting on the Leydig cells to secrete testosterone is going to act on these spermatids along with the androgen binding protein to facilitate the development of these. Again, if the numbers get too high, inhibin will be released by the Sertoli cells to inhibit the FSH release and testosterone does feed back up to the hypothalamus and if the levels get high enough that will inhibit the release of uh, luteinizing hormone or LH. You can see here as we get to those actual spermatids and kind of see it right here what has to happen on this one a lot of this cytoplasm is lost or shed but what we are going to do is get a lot of mitochondria along what's called this mitochondrial spindle here which is really kind of acts as the engine for the spermatozoa. We're gonna have the genetic material with a little enzyme to help it penetrate the egg on the head of the sperm. And then it's really just that flagellar tail that is gonna be the motor that is moving this through the female reproductive tract. And this is showing you that sperm cell relative in size to the egg cell. You can see oocyte, much larger sperm cells, actually quite small. Uh, those enzymes in the head, that acrosome, like I was saying, that is going to help that penetrate through and digest parts of that corona radiata that we talked about and penetrate through that zona pellucida of the oocyte. Once one gets through, it actually changes the, the membrane completely in the egg cell, which makes it so another sperm cell cannot enter it. Makes them impermeable sperm cells once one gets in. Uh, again, important about making sure that genetic component is two sets of 23 chromosomes to make our 23 pairs or 46 chromosomes. We do not want any more than that. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at the seminiferous tubules real quick here. Uh, some of the interstitial cells, maybe some sperm cells, and then we will move on to the other organs of the male reproductive tract. So you can see that we're looking at a seminiferous tubule. Uh, this is on that Zoomify histology one, a little bit cleaner look on this one. Uh, if you're looking at here, you can see this would be the kind of the basal lamina and the lumen here of that seminiferous tubule. And you can see along the exterior of these ones, so that would probably be one of those spermatogonia right here. Uh, you can see as they work their way and you get some of these nuclei with dark ones here, these would be those primary spermatocytes. And then you can see spermatids with a much smaller nuclei right here. Uh, Outside of that, there is these ones that are a little bit more diffuse in terms of their staining in the cells. Uh, so like the nucleus on this one right here, this is likely a Sertoli cell right here. Another one right there where these darker nuclei tend to be the primary spermatocytes. Uh, there was no slides of 
spermatozoa that I could find any of the ones here, but again, knowing the spermatogonia, the primary spermatocyte and the spermatid, as well as the Sertoli cell is ideal on those ones. Outside of those, if you go and look in between these, you can see these groups of cells right here. Those would be those interstitial cells of Leydig or Leydig cells that are responsible for making the testosterone.